Today we're going to talk about personality types and how it can help you choose a partner and how it can help you interact better and have a more effective partnership with any existing partners. Now you don't have to be a hardcore personality types and testing are hard science. Um, you could be kind of on the other end of the spectrum and think it's sort of pseudo science or looser, but there's still value in this. There's still value in this exercise regardless of where you fall on that spectrum. And people tend to fall kind of at one extreme or the other. I happen to think there's a lot to this, but even if you don't, there's a lot of value in going through and being intentional and thinking about how we all interact with the world. Personality types, uh, if you've taken the Myers-Briggs test, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about the four main quadrants in the Myers-Briggs personality uh, type inventory. So the Myers-Briggs quadrants are based on Carl Jung's work in the early 1900s. Jung was a contemporary of, of Sigmund Freud and a peer of Sigmund Freud. The, the four quadrants go way back. They go back to the ancient Greeks who um, used fire, air, water, and earth, I think. And in the Bible, they talk about the, um, there's four kind of temperaments, somewhere in Ezekiel, it's man, ox, um, eagle, and something else. But the point being, four, the four categories idea goes way, way back. I, mean, I think there's some sort of credibility that, that that's a good way of defining human interaction and um, attitudes and behaviors. So Myers-Briggs, those four categories are, or quadrants is what a lot of people call them, are introversion versus extroversion, sensing and intuition, thinking and feeling, and judging and perceiving. Now, be careful, extroversion, introversion, and thinking and feeling are very simple, and the words really stand well for, they identify well what we're talking about. The other two categories, sensing and intuition, and judging and perceiving are not maybe the best words, but they're still what we use and they're well understood. So digging in deeper, the first quadrant, introversion and extroversion, can really be thought of as an attitude toward um, life or it's kind of an energy issue. So a lot of people think an extrovert is someone who is the life of the party. That person may or may not be an extrovert. That might be an introverted person who's trained themselves to be exceedingly good in social situations. This is not really about where you're good or you know you're strong or weak. It's about how you get energy, what you prefer to do to recharge your batteries. So an introvert would prefer to sit at home and listen to some music or take a bath or read a book. An extrovert would prefer to go out and have a drink or go to a party. And that's important to understand like what people prefer. Do they prefer to be sort of outwardly facing, interacting with the world, even cooking dinner or something versus reading a book, which is inwardly focused kind of in your own head. The second quadrant is sensing versus intuition. And again, be careful of the words. They, they, they don't really do justice to what we're talking about here. Sensing, uh, people who are uh, sensing preferring are very detail oriented. They're really into their five senses. Sight, taste, smell, touch. They're, they're very, uh, again, detail oriented and experiential and you know, seeing is believing. Whereas intuition is more about uh, abstract ideas and imagination and dreaming. And those people tend to be much uh, less interested in details. So I'm an ENFP, I'm intuitive. You might read me a story and ask me what happened to that story and I can summarize that story really, really well. And I explain to you kind of where it fits into the world in the big picture. And I might not remember many of the details, right? Whereas someone who is an ESFP would probably be much more in those details. That's what they remember. So I'm much more of a sort of holistic, big picture kind of thinker and the details can sometimes, um, if I don't have perspective, be harder for me to kind of slot in and remember. The next category, thinking versus feeling. That's pretty clear what that means, but do people prefer to make their decisions based on analysis and fact and rationally, or do they prefer to make those decisions based on their gut and what feels right? The last one, judging, perceiving. Be careful, judging doesn't mean judgmental. Judgers, people who prefer that, tend to be very orderly, systematized, they like things neat, and they like to make decisions and understand, um, keep sort of schedules and their planners. Whereas perceivers tend to be more 
uh, less likely to want to make a decision. doesn't mean they're wishy-washy. They just prefer options. They'd rather not foreclose things. They're more spontaneous and flexible. So those are our quadrants. Now, we could go deep into, we won't in this video, we don't have time for it, but deep into, you know, what, what, what people are and the different ways that these different types interact with each other and which are sort of opposites and which attract and things like that. But, but it starts to get, in my mind at least, a little bit nebulous when you get into those details and it doesn't, you know, we're putting people into very standard boxes and people are way more complex than that. So at some point, I, I feel like the exercise gets a little bit, maybe less useful. It's certainly much more complex and outside the scope of this video, but let me draw a few large or broad conclusions. One is that there's a saying that opposites attract, but that tends to not be true, or you shouldn't count on that being true in uh, your romantic relationships or your business partnerships. So there may be aspects of opposites that attract, but generally speaking, uh, you're going to have more in common and find it easier to get along with someone who is more similar to you on these scales. That's sort of number one. Number two, take all of it with a big grain of salt in that we get four letters, right? I'm an ENFP. Now, F is for feeling. A lot of people would tell you I'm a real thinker, that I'm a very analytical guy, that I, I, I can sort of break problems down. My mind's very quick on those sort of things. I've done a lot of work for engineers, uh, a lot of represented many of them in sales of, of their businesses because they find articles I read and they think I'm, I'm very left-brained and I think like them. But, you know, I call myself the right brain business attorney for a reason, or sometimes I call myself a recovering left-brainer because I've understood in the past, you know, only five years or so that that sort of feeling and intuitive side of me is really sort of special and I didn't pay it enough attention. But it doesn't mean I'm not a very big thinker. So I think you have to be a little bit careful that you don't make the assumption that, oh, that person's a feeler, I'm a thinker, we're not going to get along. That person may have incredible um, thinking abilities. They may just prefer to make decisions as a feeler. And that's something that really isn't captured in, in the Myers-Briggs personality test. So what I think you're looking for there is your partner or the people you're thinking about partnering with are they representing a, a wide range of um, understanding and behavior and attitude? So in other words, I, I think you have to be a little bit careful of being in business with someone who's all thinking. I said earlier that we all exhibit all of these different preferences and, and, and traits and behaviors. But if someone is like off the scales on thinking, you know, and you're a, a mainly a feeler, that may be different because their ability to understand your position, respect it, may be challenging. Right, And if you're that person, you need to understand that you've got a big blind spot there. As opposed to someone, I mean, I, I think with with myself, I, I tend to be high on both ends of the spectrums. And, uh, oh, I'm an amazing person. No, I, I don't really mean that. I just mean that you have to understand that we're, we're all very complex. But if you've got someone who's like all in on a particular thing, that can be pretty tough. Um, Another point is that when it comes to that first one, introversion, extroversion, there's more benefit to that category, I would say, than others to finding someone opposite from you. So if you're particularly introverted, you really don't love being out there and glad handing and having meetings. That's not kind of what you prefer to do. You'd rather be knee deep in a spreadsheet. Then it is valuable to have someone who is extroverted, who charges their batteries, who likes that, who wants to be out there. It's hard to be a salesperson and not be extroverted. That's a that's a very challenging thing. And and so finding an opposite there could be of tremendous value. On the other end of the spectrum, so that fourth quadrant, judging, perceiving, that one in my opinion has the most uh, potential for problems if you're opposites. Again, Remember that some of the opposites depends on how opposite is this person totally judging and I'm totally perceiving, or you know are they are they strong on both? They just happen to slightly prefer judging. But I think this is an area where because it's so fundamental to kind of how you run the business and make decisions and do things that there's a lot of opportunity for for problems. I my wife tends to be more of a J and I just told you I'm a P so we'll, things will come up and we'll, she'll say where, where do you want to go to dinner and we'll I'll look around and find somewhere and she'll say so we're going there and I say well let's keep that oh yeah we'll go there but I want to look at some other options you know I like options right we'll make a decision but I like this the process of thinking through and and, uh, and prefer flexibility so that can be a little bit of a source of frustration for her and in a 
business context, that, that can be a big source of frustration. So it doesn't mean you can't make these this uh, a business partnership work with people who are opposite from you. And that's some of the benefit, even if you think that this is all pseudoscience, what I said in the beginning holds true, which is just thinking about these things because the behaviors aren't pseudoscience. We, some people do think more than they feel. There's just no argument there. So it's processing, hey, my partner's a more of a feeler. I'm more of a thinker. Oh, I mean, just that res revelation, just thinking about that will help you understand your partner and be more understanding because this isn't about right and wrong. This is about understanding that we're different people in the world. And so just that revelation and just bringing that to the equation will be a tremendous help in your business partnership. So um, I encourage you to dig into personality types a little bit, spend some time with them. Again, I'm trying to make you a total disciple of it, but to understand what you are, what the people around you are, I think can help a lot when choosing a partner and when trying to make your partnership super, super effective, just being intentional and self-aware about hey, we do approach the world uh, very, very differently sometimes. So if you think there's something to all this, I would love to hear from you. If you think it's garbage still, even after my attempt to convert you a little bit, then I would love to hear from you on that. Uh, thank you for stopping by today.